Welcome everybody. My name is Mr. Bigums. I travel the whole world traveling to classroom to classroom to teach students how to do math. And one day I might be in a classroom just like yours teaching you how to do math. But for right now, I snuck into this classroom and I want to be real nice and quiet because what I want to do is I want to show you how to multiply fractions, all right? And I don't want to disturb anybody because if I get caught, I got to go ahead and run off to the next classroom. So let's go and talk about fractions. First of all, what is you know, your fraction? Well, remember, a fraction is a part over a whole where we have what we call a fraction bar is going to um, distinguish between the part and the whole. Now, the best way I like to always think about fractions is a candy bar. Think about when you're given a candy bar and you have your friends around, right? Well, if you split that candy bar into, into two, what we call it is you, um, you now split it into two different parts. Now, those two parts still make up a whole. However, let's say you keep one part and you give your friend the other part. Therefore, you have one half and they have one half, all right? Now, still combining those two would make a whole. But now, when we're going to talk about multiplying fractions, what exactly happens when we multiply fractions? Well, here's the case. Let's say you have one friend over here and you have four friends over here. So now I split my candy bar with this friend. So now I have one half of my candy bar. But now these friends want me to split my candy bar with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now split my candy bar into fours. So all four of us could have a piece. So when I'm looking at multiplying fractions, think of it as, as taking a fraction of a fraction. So you're going to have a fraction, and then you're going to take a then you're going to fraction divide it up again. So here's my case that I just explained. Let's say I have my big candy bar, right? This is a nice big one. Everybody would love to have something like this. And when you're looking at that, you have, so here's my candy bar. I have one half of it. Now, I'm going to go and split that one half into fourths, meaning one, two, three, four parts. Well, how much of the total whole, of that total candy bar, am I now eating? And you could say, well, I'm going to eat that one part, and that's out of how many of these little parts? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what you notice is what I've eaten is one eighth of a whole candy bar. So we say when we multiply fractions, the way they do this is we multiply the tops, which we call our numerator of a fraction, and we multiply the denominators, which, we, which is the bottom of the fraction. So when I multiply one times one, I receive 1, 2 times 4 equals 8. All right? So now what I want to do is go through a couple of examples, all right, before I got to run because the janitors might come in and kick me out. So let's try to get these done real quick. We have 2 divided by 3 times 1 fourth. Remember, multiply fractions. Just take your um, fraction and multiply it across. So I have 2 times 1 equals 2. 3 times 4 equals 12. Now, the last important thing I want to remind you of is whenever you have a fraction, two twelfths, all right, is, can be reduced down to a, uh, a smaller fraction, meaning what we call our lowest terms. So what I say is, is there a number that goes into 2 and 12? And you can say, well, yes, 2 does, right? 2 goes into 2 one time, and 12, 2 goes into 12 six times. So if I can divide the top and bottom by a similar number, then do that so you can get it in its lowest terms. So my fraction, the, s the smallest term I can write my fraction is, is actually 1 6. Always write your fractions in lowest terms. Oh man, I get this itch that keeps on going through. The last one, 3 fifths times 3 halves. I multiply across. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, and then over here, 8 times 2 is 16. And 9 times 3 is going to be 27. Now you have to be careful because now here what I have is a negative fraction times a positive number. And when you're looking at this, when you think about that, just think of fractions as numbers. A negative number times a positive number is going to still yield you a negative fraction. Now there's one thing I do want to get over with this negative fraction part. Let's say I have negative 4 divided by 2. Let's say I have 4 divided by negative 2. If I say 4 divided by negative 2, that still gives me a negative 2. And 4 divided by negative 2, that still yields me a negative 2. So it doesn't matter where you put your negative sign when dealing with the fraction. 
just make sure that you either put it on the top or the bottom or just in front of the fraction to make a negative. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to get kicked out here. I don't want to see the principal. I got to get out to my next school. So please go ahead and check me out at golearnmath.com. And also, here's your multiplying fractions. I hope you learned a lot. I got to go.